All right, y'all, welcome back to Outside the Levees. I'm your host, Jared Serenay, and let's be honest, this time of year, it's really just an in-between period. We're before the summer where the crabbing gets really good, the shrimping starts to get good, the fishing gets good, and we're kind of after the hunting season where you really can't hunt very many things other than feral hogs, but we still have a little bit time left for trapping season. And I got Trapper Vinny here, a buddy Vinny from Pelican Bone Outdoors. Out of the many skills I have acquired over the years, one of them is not coyote trapping. So I got this coyote that keeps popping up on my camera and y'all know we love to rabbit hunt here. And if you missed any of those rabbit hunts, here's what that's like. Say hello to my little friend. Ah, here he is. Ah, there he is. Ah. All right, so you see, we took quite a few rabbits off of this property. So the only fair thing to do is take a, quite a few predators off this property, or at least take a few just to kind of even out the score. Because we know that those coyotes can eat quite a few rabbits throughout the year. So Vinny has been over here scouting. He likes this spot. This is sort of an intersection where we've got one trail, two trail, and then a third one coming out of the woods here. So there's three trails coming all together and Vinny's gonna set some coyote traps. We're gonna put one of those cell cameras on it. I've got a, a really nice camera from Tacticam that I use that gets me great photos. Never had an issue out of it. So we're gonna run that on it. That way we know as soon as we got a coyote, it's time to come get him. So let's see how Vinny does it. All right, so the reason I like this spot so much is, so coyotes like a person when it comes to walking through the woods. Nobody wants to walk through that. They want to walk through that. So they're going to do stuff. the same thing. Yeah, they're going to they're take the easiest way possible. So these game trails, like you can see over here, you can see where it's worn thin. So there's something. Oh, yeah. Now, the coyote might not have made that trail, but he's going to take it. Right. So he don't want to, uh, like I said, he don't want to go through that heavy stuff. So he's going to follow this, and he'll follow this trail all the way, all the way around, just patrolling it until he sees some, uh, some game to go after. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna set a trap. I'm gonna set three of them right here. Uh, if you're gonna set one, you might as well set two. If you set two, you might as well set three. So uh, it's not totally uncommon. We'll come here and you could have more than one coyote. You could have, you know, one in each trap. Uh, that's probably not gonna happen. But uh, so this, since this is an intersection right here, this is where I'm gonna wanna set. And I'm gonna set three different baits. That way, maybe one attracts him more than the other, but we'll have all those, uh, all those uh, directions covered. Got my handy dandy drill with just an auger bit because I got tired of just using this thing because they wear you out, especially depending on what kind of soils. So what I'm gonna try and do is use this right here as a backstop. Oh, okay. Because what I don't want him to do is come from this way to smell the bait and then he won't step where I want where I have the trap. Right, right, right. So he's gonna come right here, he'll come around. So I use that as a backstop. And I want it on the angle like that. So he, again, it'll make him come to this side to get mm -hmm. down in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't want him to be able to get to the bait real easy. So you want it down in there where he has to work for it mm -hmm. to get to it. This is serious business. Like when I called him Trapper Vinny, I wasn't joking. <laughs> like he is for real doing this thing, y'all. All right, what kind of trap is that called? This is a Duke 550. So I don't know, it's about what? Five, six inches wide, mm -hmm. got a draw. And it's a, it's just a steel foothold trap. Okay, so just grabs him by the foot. Yeah, just grabs him by the foot. You're not gonna do what I think you're gonna yeah. do. Oh no, he's not. Oh, Vinny, 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 Vinny. Please don't do it. I've actually never done it before. But... Oh no, <laughs> please don't do it. You ready? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's it? it, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Okay, all right, well. That's it. See, hands fine. No broken fingers, no broken bones. Okay. Now we're gonna set this in this hole. And the most important part is to make sure this trap is bedded down tight to where it's not gonna move if he steps on the trap. This right here is peat moss. And the reason I use that is because even if it gets wet, it can't compress. Mm -hmm. It stays spongy like that. So, so you don't instead need, of worrying about yeah. that, yeah, instead of worrying about that pan, I'll just fill it in around there. Trap of Vin, babe. Oh, now we're getting a picture. Trap of Vin. I'm gonna let Jared pick what bait we got. Oh, we Lord. Got rabbit Nutra Mix. 
We got some beaver right there. I got some, that's just Nutra. That's just rabbit. That's duck. Wow. You make all this? That's all the ones I made, yeah. Well, let's try, let's try ra uh, just rabbit since we know they're here for the rabbits. See, like my rabbits like to come out at night and it's a little clear spot. So I think that's what he's doing. He's trying to hunt them, but they they fast, they smart. They, they run back in. Hopefully they get away from him. Get a little whiff of that. Oh God, don't make me smell it. <laughs> it ain't it's bad. not that bad. No, it, no, ain't, it bad. ain't that bad. All I do is I grind up the meat and you let it taint a little bit to where it starts to get that little raw. Yeah. Meat, and then I uh, put a preservative in it. Okay. No, it wasn't that bad. It, yeah. Right. Take about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of bait. And I'm just going to stick it in that hole. Go. Stick it way down in there because I want them to be able to have to, right. to work to get it. Okay. Now the bait's in there and I like to put a lure on there. Now this uh -oh. is. Yep. Smell like a skunk. <laughs> oh, yep. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to take this little thing right here. Oh, okay. That's it. So you're not putting that in the hole? Nope. I'm just oh, putting a little okay. dab on there. This is a long distance lure. That's why it gotcha. smells so bad. Okay. So they'll be able to smell this whatever way the wind's blowing. They'll smell it gotcha. long way the way. Yeah. And that's going to draw them in. And then they'll smell the bait and then they'll try and get to that meat. All right. Well, we're going to set a couple more. And what you say we go do some fishing, Vin? Sounds good to me, cuz. All right. All right. Now, the cool thing about this place, we can rabbit hunt, we can deer hunt, we can hog hunt. And then right over that levee, we can get to fishing. So that's what we're going to do. We got those traps in very efficiently that's how Vinny rolls so let's get in the boat go see if we can catch some fish get something to eat there we go fresh bait <laughs> oh my god Vinny what are you doing <laughs> Vinny got us some fresh meat, boy. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to catch something else. We can eat that one. Right? Go ahead, Vin. What's your bad stuff? I don't think we need no more than that. We are good, my friend. Got some crawfish bait there, too. All right, yo. We finally got somebody to come play. Oh, what is that? Is that a big garfish? I don't know, I can't see. I, that big I got that net. Oh, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. Oh, yep, we get it in. That's a big gar. Hold on. Oh, sorry, y'all. I can't believe he's hooked. I can't believe he's hooked. Back up on him a little bit. He come in easy. That was a big catfish. Big old catfish. Big old blue cat. Okay, well then we know he's hooked. <laughs> nah. All right, bro. What? Oh, Ooh, he's heavy, bro. Damn. Giant blue cat nailed the cut mullet that I had sitting out there. We now have some meat in the boot, so we will not go hungry. Let's see if we can catch some more, though. It could be a fluke. There could be plenty. Could be a few. Don't know till we start fishing. We may not have a lot of fish right now, but there is absolutely never a shortage of alligators. They're always around, always somewhere. This one here is not too happy about the cold front. I can't say I blame him because I'm not too happy about it either. All right, so we came in from this big lake here and that lake was full of uh, muddy, silty water. I guess just from the cold fronts, the tides, all those things coming together, making some really undesirable water. But I saw where the water started to really clear up. And as soon as I come in here, I've seen this cut here. Alligators all jumped off, but we're gonna go ahead and fish this cut for a little while. It looks nice and clean. See some bait moving around, so let's go try that. Oh, 
catfish. Ha! Well, second bite I got right there. Oh, look at a teal. Jeez. Wow, look at this. Listen to the noise they make. They know it's over. Look at them. Wow, look at them all. You think I got a fish on? <laughs> uh, come on. I'm old hammerhead. Let's go. Get up here. Get up here, hammerhead. Looks like a channel cat, huh? It is. That's what it is, Vinny Dog. Alright, y'all, we found a bite. We finally found us a bite. We finally got a bite. Alright, channel cat. I just had to watch them ducks flying by and wait on my bite. That's all. But look, see? That, that one got him. There he is. Hey, -o. We got something to eat now, folks. Actually, I don't. Well, Renny don't listen. Folks, what I'm using here is my Cast King Royale Advantage. It's a seven foot three with a nice fast tip, medium action. And uh, this is that 3000 series Skeet Reese reel that I just love. Everything I'm using is nice and light, good for casting all day long. And I got a 30 pound braid to a loud bobber. Going with a short leader, uh, relatively short. That's probably foot and a half, two foot. It's a jig head and a cut mullet. Nothing's acting sluggish. That's the good thing. Like everything wants to eat, you know? When I get like weird bites or... So I just don't... We just never found them. That's what we came for, Ben. That's what we came for, Ben. Yeah, that's what we that's the guy we came for, Vin. Oh yeah. That's the fella I came looking for, Vinny. <laughs> it's a hammer time too, boy. <laughs> oh hammerhead. That's the fella I came looking for. He ain't nowhere near done. Oh. Yeah, he birdie. Give me a second. Whew. I knew he wasn't ready. I knew he wasn't ready. Hey, -o. caught me a goldfish, baby. <laughs> caught me a goldfish, Vin, on a cut mullet. Said so you hadn't caught reds on a cup mullet, huh? Yeah, I'll do. Ooh, look how beautiful that fish is, folks. Just a nice, beautiful orange goldfish, folks. Mm -mm -mm. That's what I came to catch. I love catching these suckers so bad. Oh, that is awesome. folks I'm gonna go ahead and cook the redfish that I caught I got him all cleaned up got him pieced out for what I want to do we're gonna go ahead and cook this down uh, in a hot pan sort of like a blackening thing but then we're gonna make a little salsa to go over it and I've got some little mandarin oranges for the salsa some limes some red onion and we're gonna get right on into it let's get started right now all right we melted down some butter and I'm gonna baste each one of these fillets on both sides with the butter 
Then I've got some Bistec Mafia seasoning. This is just a general purpose fajita seasoning. All right, folks, that's kind of what it looks like. Let's go ahead and get that dropped into our pan. All right, so it should be hot and steaming. When you drop it in, you want it to start cooking right away. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip. Looking good, looking good. All right, folks, we got our fish all cooked up. Now it's time to throw together the salsa. I'm gonna put my chopped mandarin oranges in a bowl. That way I could see what that looks like and then I'll know how much of everything else I need. So I'll put a good little hand of red onions and then probably a little bit more. You don't want this to be the most overpowering part, about like that. And uh, let's get that up here. So that's what we're working with. And then we're just going to simply add cilantro. I love cilantro, so I'm okay if it's a little bit heavy on cilantro. And uh, then I've got one lime here. Squeeze that lime, get it in there. Oh yeah, that's plenty right there, folks. All right, that's what we're working with. And we'll just kind of mix that up a little bit. Look how pretty that is, huh? Look how pretty. I'm gonna go with a little bit more cilantro. Just make it even more colorful. Voila. I've got a little bit of rice here. I'm gonna take two pieces of that grilled redfish like that. And then we're gonna come on in with our salsa, like so. Make sure I get some of them juices from the bottom. Boom. Then I'll just squeeze a little bit more lime juice over it. That's it. There she is. Well, thank you again for tuning in. Like I said, this is really a tough time of year. I'm doing my best to get these videos out, but what I don't want to do is put out something that's not super enjoyable. So we're having to put a lot of days in to track the fish, the shrimp, the crabs, the crawfish, all those things. But I promise you we're putting in the time and I promise you we're gonna push through and get as many videos out as we can. Thank you for being a part of it and we'll see you on the next one.